Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be taking a look at the team that's going to be representing Team USA at the 2024 Women's World Championship happening in Utica, USA. So with that being said, we'll take a look starting off here with what's going on. What's the situation looking like for Team USA this year? And I have to say, it's an interesting one. When we looked at it sort of off the top, we made the, the opening video with Canada, sort of a team preview. As This is probably the last team preview we'll have. We'll have the, the upcoming sort of tournament preview coming out a little bit later tomorrow. But at the same time, when we looked at a team like USA, they looked like a team that was poised for a lot of power in this tournament. You look at what the PWHL has, what is a lot of, a lot of Canadians and a lot of Americans. And when we looked at it, that's where I sort of saw that going. But yet the U.S. dropped their lineup and it wasn't that many PWHL players. It was a lot of NCAA women. And that, with that being said, normally, you know, that's, that's an interesting move. But one of the things that I was really looking at is, you know, this makes sense, right? When you look at it, there's a big, big tournament coming up in about two years. You know, it's something you might have heard of it. I might have heard of it. It's something called, you know, the Olympics. It's kind of a, a big event. And from what I've seen with the way that the U.S. is structured this year, that is their objective. They're not trying to win this year's tournament. They're trying to build some chemistry to win the big one. The one that happens every four years, the gold medal in the Olympics. But nonetheless, it's still a team that has a lot of firepower. Despite being a young team, I think this is probably one of the better U.S. teams that they've put together over the past few years. But with that, we'll take a look at who's going to be representing Team USA this year, starting with the forwards with Lacey Eden, Kirsten Sims, Kelly Panic, Grace Simwinkle, Lila Edwards, Haley Skamura, Britta Curl, Hillary Knight, Tessa Janicki, Hannah Bilka, Joy Dunn, Alex Carpenter, Kendall Coyne Schofield, Taylor Heisey, Abby Murphy, and then the defense we have Kayla Burns, Caroline Her Harvey, Megan Keller, Rory Gilday, Haley Wynn, Savannah Harmon, and Sydney Morrow, and then the goalies with Nicole Hensley, Aaron Frankel, and Gwyneth Phillips. So, a really, really interesting sort of team when we look at it. Not that many PWHL women in this tournament for Team USA, but at the same time, a lot, a lot of NCAA women that are going to perform. And I mean, they are high, high-end caliber players, so not to take too much away from that. But when we look at it, right, you think about it, a lot of what Canada has is by the time 2026 rolls around, a lot of players that are going to be over 30, sort of a last hurrah in that sense, you know, their last problem, they're probably their last Olympics. But when we look at Team USA, it's ripened with young women that are going to be able to play at the highest, highest level for Team USA. And I think it's really, really interesting sort of see what the US is doing in this tournament. Not taking in, you know, the headline with the PWHL and all of that, but instead picking players that are going to help them in the long run, where Canada doesn't really have that many young players, that's where Team USA is going to really capitalize in this tournament. But we'll take a look here now at the schedule of what Team USA is going to be looking like. We'll start here on April 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time against the Swiss. Then they will move on April 5th to the Czechs at 7 p.m. April 6th, they will play the Finns at 7 p.m. And lastly, in the, the conclude preliminary round, they'll play Canada on April 8th at 7 p.m. Then they will make the quarterfinals automatically as they are in Group A. That will happen on April 11th. That will be the quarterfinals. Semifinals will happen on April 13th. So well, the bronze medal game on April 14th at 1 p.m. As well, the gold medal game on April 14th at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So that being said, this team is yet again, we think about it as years past, this term has always been dominated by two teams. I don't see that changing too much. I think the Czechs could be an interesting game. Uh, the Finns as well, they'll play opening to opening night. That's a game I would definitely recommend watching because that'll definitely determine, you know, what's going to happen in this sort of tournament. Are they going to be able to pull something off? Or are they not? I think that first game between the Czechs and the Finns, those are the two teams to really watch for. Switzerland's another one that could sort of find their way in there. But at the same time, the Czechs and the Finns this year, in my opinion at least, are the two teams that have a shot at knocking off Canada and the U.S. Normally it's only the Finns. I've seen the Czechs the last couple years. They've slowly but surely made their way. And I think they are a team that definitely has a shot. Their goaltending is going to have to be crucial though if they are going to want a shot against the U.S. or Canada. But with that being said, we'll take a look here now at the lines. So these are mock lines, not, not anything official, but one of the key things I will sort of mention, we saw it in the, in that little roster show. It's 15 players normally is what the U.S. brought. This, but they can only play 13 forwards. So they're going to have, have to have two healthy scratches at all times. 
which, I mean, we sort of talked about it off the top, right? They're a team that's looking to get a little bit of experience in the international game, especially at the highest level, which is these double IHF tournaments. Remember, the PWHL next year is probably going to see a lot more European players come in and coming in. This year, it's predominantly U.S. and Canada players, but we will see over the next couple of years a lot more European players. But we'll sort of take a look at this here right now. So we have Coin Heisey and Knight on that first line. I think it's pretty given that they're going to try and overload one line. In my opinion, you sort of put all the veterans together in that sense. You take the number one pick overall in the PWHL draft with Heisey, and you sort of stick all those players together, see what's going to happen. That's the line that I expect to put together a lot of offense, you know, provide that leadership as well, sort of those two aspects that you're looking for. Then the second line, we go with Skimura, Panic, and Zoomwinkle. Another one of those lines that are sort of, you know, solid lines they aren't going to do too much but they aren't going to do anything too bad right they're going to sort of play that 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 steady game that you need then we'll take a look at the third line here with sims carpenter and edwards this is one that i really really like i think you sort of stick sims and edwards together you keep them together and we see sort of what goes on there both those players have put together some pretty good performances you throw alex carpenter on there and who knows what's going to happen i think that's another really solid line and then my favorite line the fourth line here with janicky eden and murphy all those players, sort of your reputation line, if you want to call it that, those women are going to put together quite the performance on that fourth line and really sort of get into those areas that they need to play that sort of physical game. I will be curious to see how they uh, officiate this tournament. PWHL has, has sort of leaned out the rules a little bit, so there's a lot more hitting allowed where the IHF doesn't allow it. So that will be something I'm definitely going to be looking towards to see what happens in this tournament. Are they going to keep sort of the PWHL rules? Or are they going to stick with the old rules? So that'd be another one. So we're going to see how the PWHL players react to that. And then lastly, I'll put Bilka as sort of a 13th forward. Uh, Curl and Dunn are two players that I have off this list. They will play at some point in this tournament. I can almost guarantee you that because just the way the U.S. schedule works, they're going to have some games that they can probably roll over a little bit, sit some of their better players. Will they? Who knows? But Curl and Dunn, in my opinion, are the two sort of forwards that don't quite have a home quite yet uh, obviously this tournament, this tournament progresses there's always someone who sort of comes out of nowhere but we'll see with that then to the defense we go with keller and win on that first pair pretty much a shutdown pair provide a little bit of offense where they need to as well as harvey and barnes those two are going to be pretty solid as well and then lastly Harmon and morrow on that third pairing a little bit more offensive minded as well as the harvey barnes line will be a little bit more offensive minded but i think once again sort of just trying to keep the pucks out of the net at the same time providing that offense i think that's what it does as well as gilday prop that seventh forward i think she sort of slides in there quite nicely sort of plays wherever they need sort of they need her to obviously uh there's always going to be a short stick at this tournament sort of a player without a pairing and i think gilday sort of fits that role but at the same time i do expect her to play quite a bit i don't think it's one of those teams where they only roll their six i think there's going to be a seven four or seven defense sort of split as we see along here and then lastly the goalies with hensley i think has to be the starter here you've just seen her year after year she's been there she's done that and i think especially at this tournament you want to sort of give her the reins at, at least for now in a couple of years who knows but until then i think it, it sort of has to be hensley and then Frankel, I've put as the second goalie, sort of the PWHL connection there. I just, I, I find it very hard to believe Phillips will take that over quite yet. But at the same time, there's always surprises in the tournament. All three goalies I expect to play at some point. So it's really going to be sort of that live audition. I believe Hensley would get the Canada game, which normally means she's going to be the starter. But of course, still remains to be seen, as we said a lot a lot of young players they're trying to build up some chemistry they're trying to build up some sort of experience if you want to call it that so that's sort of the trick to this sort of realm of what the team usa is trying to do and lastly we'll talk about what are the expectations for team usa on this tournament as we mentioned time after time eyes on milan 2026 is the olympics that is where at least i see them going they decided to take that sort of transition year Put a lot of players together that will be sort of in their prime uh, when it comes to 2026 Olympics. And that's what they're sort of doing. Where you see Canada sort of sticking with their veteran core. The U.S. is saying, we want the Olympics and we're going to get our players ready for that. So that's that's one of the biggest things here. As well as the expectations in terms of, are they going to win gold this year? I mean, in my opinion, they're probably number two. 
just behind Canada. But as we always say, it's a toss up between the two teams. We'll see year after year, it always seems to come down to the goaltending. So we'll see who has the hot goaltending in the finals. Uh, but with that, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like are subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on Team USA. Until next time, see you.